Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Text from our message is the gospel reading that we heard earlier. We pray. Lord God, we pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord. We pray, Lord, in the world of blindness and darkness, you would open our eyes to see that you're alive. In the name of Jesus, amen. So we'll be looking at uh, Road to Emmaus. How many of you are familiar with this story? Yeah. Oh, really? Come on. You guys just don't want to raise your hand in the morning, huh? Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a great story. It's actually one of my favorite stories. Because um, I think it's, it's such a picture of things that we all experience, isn't it? When you've ever experienced doubt, Are you experiencing some doubt right now whether or not you should raise your hand as a Lutheran? <laughs> gotcha, yeah. <laughs> yeah, doubt that, that this Christian thing is really what it's all about, right? Is this God really, really, Je- really Jesus? Is, is he really risen? Is he really alive? Is, have I just, have I been led astray for years? Have I just been brought up with, with what my parents told me because my parents brought me to church? Have I just believed something that's just in my family? Is it really true what my friends say at school? Is it really true what they say in the media? Is it really true with all these other religions that this could be the one, the one religion that's true? You ever thought that? I know I have. And more often, like these two disciples on the road, we, the doubts probably come into our lives when things happen that we don't expect. We lose our job, we get divorced, we have problems at school, we have things in our life that seem to linger on and on and on, right? chronic pains, chronic issues in family, conflict, relationship problems, financial problems, maybe children that we're praying for that no matter what we do, they just don't seem to see the truth. Maybe we use our best arguments and yet it still doesn't seem to do anything to change people's mind. And it gets us to think, is this really real? And it's it's no coincidence that in Easter, right after the great Easter celebration, we have two texts that are about doubt, right? Last week we had the doubting Thomas, and this week we have the disciples. And if we look at the first scene, (laughs) these guys look pretty happy now. They look pretty, pretty hopeless. Okay. I know you guys aren't that engaged this morning because you want to raise your hand, but do you have different emotions that you might say they're feeling right now? Scared? Yeah, probably scared. Anxious, yes. What's going on? Confused, yes. That's what I was thinking as well, and yeah, lost. How about disappointed? Ever feel disappointment? Well, maybe anger. What were we thinking? We devoted our life to following this guy, you know, for three years, thinking that he was the Messiah, he was the one that was gonna come redeem Israel, Restore our lives and our kingdom, and now he's dead. Maybe there's even some shame. I can't believe I was so stupid. I can't believe I I allowed that to be put over my eyes. 
can't believe I fell for that. Those are all certain things that we'll feel as Christians in this world, right? Unless you just want to not feel anything. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how long you've gone to church. It doesn't matter how great your faith is. The truth is, eventually there will be something that happens in your life that causes you to ask, is this really true? But when it comes down to it, it's, it's about failed expectations, right? They had failed expectations of who Jesus was and who the Messiah was and what he was going to do when he came into the world. And ultimately, that's why they had disappointment. That's why they had shame. That's why they were sad and downcast. Jesus didn't live up to who they wanted and expected him to be. And yet, we have the next scene. (laughs) I think that's pretty good. You see Jesus' expression? You know that expression? It's the expression that you're about to (laughs) go in and blow somebody's mind. (laughs) You have no idea what you guys are in for. You ever been, you know, some people are talking and they're just so frustrated, like, oh, I can't fix this. I don't know what to do. Ah." And then you're like, oh, I know. I know how to fix that. I know how to, I know how to answer the solution to that problem. I know where you need to go. I know. And you're just like, oh, man, I can't wait to drop this on them and turn their sorrow into joy. That's what Jesus is thinking. This is great because it actually shows that Jesus has a sense of humor. Do you guys know this? Yes. Isn't this great how he just doesn't, he doesn't, you know, allow him to recognize himself. And he acts like he's, you know, stupid or something, right? He's like, well, what are you guys talking about? You know? Hmm. Jesus, huh? Oh, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, right? How can that be anything but he's just, you know, He's messing with them, right? And yet Jesus comes in and and joins this thing. And what's even funnier is that they start to scold him, right? And it's like, aren't you, are you the only one who doesn't know about what's going on? Oh my goodness, look at this guy. Who is this guy? I mean, come on. Doesn't even know about all the news everybody's been talking about, you know, this prophet Jesus who's great and all these uh, words and miracles and then he thought he was going to be the Messiah, and everybody was saying he was going to be the Messiah. He said he was the Messiah. Now he's dead. Yeah, what, have you been living under a rock, guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just, you know, just see him. Hmm, yeah. I guess so. I, I don't know. I, I just haven't heard anything like that. But Jesus uh, comes and he pursues these people. He tracks them down, doesn't he? He says he, uh, in, the, in the Corinthians, he appeared to over 500 eyewitnesses after he rose from the dead. He chased down the disciples when they were in fear, when they were in doubt, when they were in worry, when they felt disappointment. He comes into our lives and pursues us and joins us in our journey. And then he does what might be the greatest Bible study ever, right? He comes and he interprets all the scriptures to them. And specifically all the scriptures that point to him, that point to his uh, being the Messiah and what the Messiah would really do, right? And we don't know exactly what that would happen, but I think I'll take a crack at it. Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. 
said, remember in Genesis 3.15, right after the fall into sin, there's a prophecy that God would put enmity between the serpent, the devil, and the woman, Eve, in between their offspring, and that the Christ would bru bruise his head, the devil, the devil would bruise his heel. Oh, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, Jesus was crucified. He put a nail in his feet and his head, his uh, hands. In, the, in Moses, the prophet Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you and from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. You know, Jesus was from the uh, tribe of Judah. He was an Israelite. And he was considered a prophet. Mighty in word and deed, as you guys have just said. You know, the prophet Jeremiah says the days are coming when God will raise up for David a righteous branch. And you shall reign as a king. Deal wisely. And this is the name by which you will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Did you know that? The Messiah will actually come and he will be our righteousness. From the prophet Zechariah, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Do you guys know what Jesus rode into Jerusalem on? Just, you know, you guys knew all the stuff that happened. And, uh, oh, it was a donkey. Oh, oh really? Oh, just, I didn't know that. That's, that's really fascinating. Yeah. But he was pierced for our transgressions. You guys heard this in the prophet Isaiah? Messiah would be crushed for our iniquities. And there'd be punishment that would be on him, and, but it would bring people peace. And by his wounds, they would be healed. You know what they did to Jesus on the cross? They, they pierced him, his hands and his feet. You know what the prophet David says in the Psalms? That actually, uh, after the Messiah is dead, he won't stay dead. You won't abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will it to your Holy One see decay. Did you guys actually know that the Messiah was prophesied to rise from the dead? Isn't that interesting? What did you say about... Um, what your woman said, they said they, they went to the tomb and the body wasn't there. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. And, the, and your friends went there, the other disciples went there and saw the same thing? Yeah. You know, the prophet Isaiah said, after two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up that we may live before him. How many days did you guys say that it was since... Uh, this thing happened? Oh, the th three days. Oh, okay. Just making sure. Yeah. You guys know the story of Jonah? Yeah, how many days was he in the belly of the fish? Three days? Oh. Now, you remember this Jesus when he was talking about it, and he said, there will be no sign except the sign of Jonah. It's just as Jonah was three days in the fish, so the Son of Man will be three days in the earth. But then he will rise again. And you can just feel the anticipation burning. It's like you're on the verge of discovering something that will change your life forever. So as they approached the village to where they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. Again, he's messing with them, <laughs> right? Oh, wait, oh, is this where you live? Oh, okay, oh, yeah. yeah, it's a nice house. Oh, it's getting late, I better get going. Oh. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I'm gonna start going now, over here. I mean, the... I'm not sure if I should get going, but, you know, it's, uh, I mean, if you guys, you know, can you stay with us? Uh, oh, yes, yes. I'll be happy to. It's 
stay with us. When's the last time you had that feeling? That what God was telling you, what Jesus was telling you was so amazing that you just wanted him to stay a little bit longer. Keep, keep talking. Keep going. I'm listening. You have my attention. Not, when is church over? How long is this going to go on? Do I have to go to Bible study today? Do I have to read my Bible today? What is going on with us, right? Have we lost our joy? Have we lost our burning in our hearts? Have we been weighed down by the disappointments and the burdens of life so much that we live like he's dead? Today, he's coming into our hearts. He's not walking on the road with us, but he's coming into us today through a person to tell you that he's alive. And when you know that truth, when you feel that you're on the verge of that discovery, this is going to change your life in, in the course of history. You cannot help but ask Jesus to stay. And the amazing thing is that he does. He stays with them. Even though they treated him like an idiot, even though they <laughs> didn't get it, even though they or doubting and fearing and being completely wrong. He stays with them. He continues to pursue them. And in the final scene, he opens their eyes as he breaks the bread. So he's dining with them and so many times in, in meals, right? Or precious moments in scripture. And he opens their eyes as he breaks the bread, right? This is the, what the Messiah would do, would break his body for you. And now he's alive with you. And their eyes are opened, and they see him. And they say, were not our hearts burning with us, within us, while he talked with us on the road to open the scriptures to us? We can let the disappointments of life, the failures, the missed expectations, what other people are saying, what the world is saying, we can allow that to close our hearts to the truth. And that will make us live as disappointed people. But isn't it time that we let the Lord in? that instead of just hearing this as a cognitive thing in our lives every year on Easter, that we would start belie believing and living like this is true. And as we embrace these, these truths, it starts to burn in us because as we live our lives with that truth, we start to see it every day. That, wow, he's not just a story, he's someone that is alive today. And so what happens? They return all the way to Jerusalem, seven miles at nighttime. They run all the way back to Jerusalem to tell the others, this is something that you have to know. And that's what it does, doesn't it? The gospel seems too good to be true. But when we see that it's true, we can't help but share the truth. What do they say? <laughs> Anybody know Greek? What? Yeah, yeah, pretty close, yeah. Christ is risen, truly he is risen. Or indeed, he's risen indeed. So this is actually, um, Something my, 
one of my members of my vicarage church, uh, Pilgrim Lutheran Church in Wisconsin, uh, when I was an intern, there was a blind man who would come to this service every Sunday and he'd say, Christos Nesti! And I was, you know, smart seminarian. I had no idea what he was like. What? Jesus, what? <laughs> You'd say it every Sunday, you know? Uh, and then I finally got it, right? And uh, so you, and then I'd finally say, Alita Sanasti. And he say it every Sunday. Isn't that crazy? The person who probably saw Jesus and recognized him the most was the person who was the only person in the whole congregation who was blind. Yeah, it was a truth that he brought in to every week with him. And even though he was blind, they could see the joy in his eyes. Christos Sinesti! Lethos Sinesti! Let's try it. Christos Sinesti! Alethos Sinesti! Okay, now say it like you actually just saw Jesus on the road. Christos Sinesti! <laughs> Okay, I'm giving you one last try. You literally just saw Jesus on the road. You ran seven miles from Emmaus to Jerusalem and to all, all of the other disciples who didn't know this. Christos and Esti. Oh. All right, that was pretty good. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding will guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen.